Friends, thank you for watching my channel. I just want to remind you if you need wallpaper, go to www.wallpaperboulevard.com. Tell them Spencer sent you. In fact, if you use my hashtag, Spencer Colgan is wallpaper, they'll be sure to give you a 10% off at your checkout. No matter how much you order, they have a wide selection of wallpaper. Check it out. Tell them I said hello. Wallpaper in the bathroom. This is an oddity, this thing. And such a short bump out creates a high likelihood that it will not be perfectly square, meaning that this angle here won't be 90 consistently from the bottom upward. The reason I point it out is because I want to ask you, the do-it-yourselfer, where would you begin installing this wallpaper if it were you who had to start this wallpaper? Where would you be inclined to start hanging? Now that I just showed you the bathroom, can I tell you where I'm going to start? Right here. Right here. This is a disaster to be coming up against it with a piece here and, an, and another one starting here. If it is not straight, then you increase the risk of mismatches. Wouldn't you rather have the center of the sheet on this? It gives you more opportunity to play with the sheet over here and play with the piece over here so that you're not competing with a seam that ends here, joining it here, and then uh, you, want, you can wind up with a real problem. And so I opt to start here. So not only is the plumb line most important on the first sheet, of equal importance is that don't go by eye. Even if it's not the first sheet when you're coming off of a corner like this, with two 90 degree or should be 90 degree angles, only within three and a half, four inches of each other, the outside and the inside, check that plumb. This line that you're looking at here will determine where the corner falls. In other words, you might say, well, wh where, do I, where do I make the determination about what wallpaper falls in that corner? There's your answer right there, your plumb line. Okay, we're not using that one over there because it's not settled yet. The wallpaper has not been landed. Landed, literally like put down. And so we will determine what this plumb line being straight does to our corner. In other words, you see this symbol here, this O. Okay, look at this little white piece in there. Most of it's on this wall, some of it's on this wall. Well, you come down to the same one and you already see that most of the white is on this wall. This corner, therefore, is significantly off because 36 inches from here, actually that's about 48 inches. We have such a drastic difference, so, if you're the do-it-yourselfer, don't worry that you messed this up. Don't worry. What you're going to have to do is cut this corner, because we always cut the corner, right? Always cut the inside corner. And then, so if that's off, our plumb line over here will be off. If our corner is off, it's going to affect this piece being straight. Now, wouldn't you rather have 
the longer piece straight than working off of this. You see, if I, if I were to plumb it against here, we would have a lot more crooked here. And so our piece is short over these tiles. So our adjustment won't be so significant, okay? So we made our straight line here, and then we will adjust this one and cut accordingly here, okay? Let's do that. Now, when you cut an inside corner, the, the blade will be on the, a particular side of this smoother. I want to challenge you, the person watching this. Would you want your cut to be on this side of the smoother? By the way, this gives you an eighth of an inch. So if I cut against here, I have an eighth of an inch of wallpaper on this piece. If I cut it here, however, I have an eighth of an inch of wallpaper on this wall. Do you understand if, if I cut alongside of this thing, I'm gonna have an eighth of an inch of wallpaper. Okay, the determination is made based on where you, the viewer, the homeowner, the person looking at this wall, sees this wall and this wall, and what edge of the wallpaper after being cut will show. That's what determines it. So I come in the bathroom, I'm looking at this wall here, and consequently this wall. Therefore, you would want this wallpaper on this wall to be underneath this. Because if you do it the other way, this wallpaper, once cut, you will see the edge looking at you when you're looking at this wall. Do you understand that? The determination will be made by putting my smoother against the wall and cutting here so that this edge, after I cut it, will be underneath this sheet and this paper will be moved toward the corner to tuck the edge of this piece underneath this one so you don't see the edge of this piece right here looking at you if you do it the wrong way. Okay, let me cut it for you. As I said, we're gonna put our smoother up against here. And we're going to take our blade, very sharp blade, and cut along the smoother. Make sure you change the blade at least once on a long wall. Keep the blade pressed up against the smoother because the blade likes to go off on its own direction. Okay. Now, let's come down for you. Again, we're running our blade here. Nice and easy now. Don't get flustered because it's easy to tear your wallpaper in corners like these. This is what I like about working in bathrooms. You get to sit down on the job, if you know what I mean. Okay. Somebody commented on one of my videos recently. You know what he said? It was on a wallpaper removal video. He says, like I was in a position like this, this wise guy goes, I don't want to see your face. Show me the wall. I wanted to comment, you nasty, you know what? There are some crazy people out there. You know? Crazy people. I know, I need a haircut. I went to get a haircut today. And, um, let's just say 
that the hair color um, is somewhat inappropriate. So I was waiting until my favorite hair color was there and uh, she wasn't there. So I couldn't get a haircut. Um, being a YouTube star, you have to have, I don't know if you realize this, but YouTube tells you that you have to look nice. You know, when you have a channel. So. Now, let me bring you up close to show you this phenomenal construction. Remember now, we come in the bathroom, we're looking at this wall, and consequently, this wall straight up looking at us. And so we make our cut. If we don't cut the corner, this is what's going to happen to you when a week, at least three days, maybe no more than a week passes. You'll go into your corner and do this, and this is what you'll get. The wallpaper will move. You have to cut this, okay? No other way around it. Now, we know this is straight. And so this wallpaper covers this wall and it goes up onto this wall an eighth of an inch. It may not look like that to you, but if you look close, you'll see that the edge of this wallpaper is on this wall. And now all we have to do is tuck it underneath here. Look, see how that works? Now, you tell me, how does that scene look as opposed to what you were just looking at? You see how it hides it? Otherwise, you would be looking at this edge right here in the corner. It's tucked away under here. And therefore, you get a better job, right or wrong? Oh, you can definitely see it there because the wall is more crooked here. You can see this wallpaper is on this wall. See that? You see this, this black piece here? This is big time on this wall. So I smoothed it out more, bringing this sheet under here and putting this one over. But I'm not done. I just wanted to show you in theory what goes on. I have to now make this straight. So this is going to be effective. I'm gonna lift this up now so that I can, according to my level, I'm gonna determine how much of this wallpaper I have to do this. And that will determine what the uh, price for, you know, the cost of doing business, so to speak, is on this. But now that I think about it, actually, since, oh, no, I was wrong, scratch that. Okay, so let me, let me do that and I'll show you what I'm talking about up here. You can already see how crooked this is. Let's see by the level. So in order to straighten this out, we have to cut the middle and move this part over at the top, maybe move the bottom out. Okay, let's see. Okay, in order to make my level straight, I'm touching at the top there, my wallpaper, and there's my space. So our correction in this corner will be about 3 sixteenths of an inch, because that's at least an eighth, okay? That space there is, you know, it's not that bad, but you can see how it gets, it, it loses the line up there, right? So that's our uh, difference. Do you think I should even mess with it? In other words, if we make this straight, we're going to pull the top over here. We can't pull the bottom over here because we'll separate the corner. So we bring where we have the excess over to here and trim it up here, okay? But I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do, folks. 
since we're dealing with such a little amount of um, non-compliance, I'm going to leave this here. And I'm going to opt to correct it over here. Okay? We're only talking about no more than 3 sixteenths of an inch. I'm going to leave this crooked. Yes, I'm going to use the word crooked. I'm going to leave this crooked. Because you can't tell. You can't really tell. When you put the other sheet up against it, you can't tell. These things are so uh, spaced out that you won't be able to tell from here to here that it's not plumb. And I will make my correction in this corner. So while I hold this in place, I hold this in place, I then push the other side of the corner into place. Because if you don't hold this little piece in place, it'll move on you. Okay? Let me show you what I mean. So, you can see that. Okay, so I hold it in place with a sponge. I don't want to make dents in my wallpaper. I think you're going to like this very much. Okay. Let me bring you up there as I do this. And this is where you can finesse your corner, okay? Okay. It's a tough process, but you know what? After you're done, it really makes a difference between an amateur and a pro corners, especially with black and white, or any dark color. You know, you can't have wool showing, and, you know, you, and you can't tell people, oh, well, your wool is crooked. Nobody wants to hear that. She knows, they know. The wool is crooked, they know it already. Your job is to make it look like it's not crooked. That's all. I don't like when people use excuses. It's fair game when you come to someone's house and you say, hey, your wall is crooked. That's fair game. But after you install it, then you're looking to get paid. You say, oh, you know, your wall's crooked. Tell them that beforehand. It sounds more professional anyway. So, you know, your wall's crooked. I'm not a magician here. You get the point. You don't say that, but understand what I mean. And I can't do anything about that. Your wall's crooked. That's a fair statement. Okay. Now we're hanging wallpaper over texture here. Remember, there's texture underneath this. Okay? I'm going to show you a little trick. Just give me a minute. Okay, now, remember I said we're hanging over texture and um, that's always a challenge. Now, my corner looks gorgeous. I'm sure you will agree. Now, sometimes you get a wrinkle in the paper. And too much manipulation will mar the surface. Uh-uh-uh, we don't do that on our channel. Here's, a, here's what you're gonna do. Uh, oftentimes, these wrinkles constrict and they pull, they pull the material in the proper direction and they're hidden. There's a shadow there, but you see it there? Okay, watch this. I'll show you something. Now, we are nine feet in the air, right? Just about. Now watch this. Why am I doing this? Now, 
you're down here, you're looking up. You'll see this wrinkle unless you do this. Watch this. You're pulling it out, all right? And what you're doing is you're getting rid of the torque and you're putting the wallpaper, the bottom part, over the top. A hair, a hair, and I do mean a hair. And guess what happens when you're down here and you're looking up? You can't notice it because you're not tall enough to do that. So when you look up, you just see the wallpaper and it looks like one continuous white sheet of wallpaper. Now I share that with you because I don't want you thinking wallpaper hangers are know-it-alls. What, what we know how to do is to give the illusion of perfection. You see, you can't see that anymore. And these little texture impressions that creates a profile, you let that dry and as the water evaporates in the paste, the wallpaper goes inside of all of this. This particular wallpaper, some don't, but this one will. It'll hug all of these nooks and crannies. Watch this. You see the lines I'm making? It's because we have water in there. But once that water evaporates, what you're gonna see is a universal appearance of this, okay? Do you understand what I did here with that? I hope you do. All right, now. How do you like, how do you like my seam? Doesn't my seam seem beautiful? Right? Okay, I'm gonna trim this now and be done with it. Let me show you how to trim. And I'm going to reference this part of the video to my most popular video, which is uh, peel and stick wallpaper installation. Many, many, many people have said, hey, you never showed me how to trim it. Well, it's in practically every video I make, so I'm going to link this trim to that video so people know how to trim my peel and stick that I installed a couple of years back. It has uh, over 275,000 views. How to trim wallpaper edges. Take your smoother, put it up against the wallpaper. Okay, what I mean by up against is, put it up against the wall that you hung it on, and then put the plastic up against the corner and trim against your plastic, not against the wall. Okay, break your blade so that you have a sharp blade. Let me bring you up close so you know what I'm talking about. So I only have, I have two hands working today. One is holding the camera. Look, I'm putting my, my smoother up against this, protecting my wallpaper from getting cut. And then I'm cutting up against my smoother. That's what I'm doing. Okay, let's do that again. Grout will dullen your blade, so go short spout, spurts, just in case it starts to tear your wallpaper. If you go short, 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 you'll see that if you do tear it, it'll be such a minimal thing, you'll be able to fix it. But if you're tearing it and you're not looking at what you're doing, you'll have four or five inches of a rip. So be careful and pay attention. So, let's see how I did, okay. Uh-huh, 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 okay. Okay, you can't see it. So, that's how I did it, I'll show you the end result. Moving right along with our project, we came around the surround in the shower stall, and then we come out with one sheet of wallpaper that covers both the surround at the top and then less than eight inches outside of the tiles. Now, 
if you're doing this for the first time, here's what likely, likely will happen. It happened to a guy I know. He's talking right now. What happens is where the piece meets the top of the tile, it hinges imperceptibly. Watch what I mean by that. I can move this wallpaper out three inches. Now you'll see how the X gets smaller toward the side as I go up. But you can't tell at the top where the hinge, so to speak, is that it's doing that. And for that reason, you must use a level when you come off of these corners, such as windows, closets, and tile walls. And so we want to use a level. And so we're going to put the wallpaper, we're going to put the level at the top of our wallpaper and see where we are. You have to make sure it's on, on the top of that and perfect. Now, let's see how bad we're off. It's hard to do this with one hand, you know? He's a one on paper hanger. <laughs> Look how badly we're off. Does it look that bad? No, right? So, we gotta bring this over. I mean, check it out. Watch, I'm gonna make a level, watch this. Okay, look how much I gotta bring the wallpaper over. But does it look like it doesn't? it's that much off at the hinge? No! No, it doesn't, so that's why you have to use a level. Now, if you wanna be a little sharper, intellectually, you say, well, Spencer, I'll just go by the X's. This X is an, an inch and a quarter away here, and this one is, yeah, okay, that's fine. It, it, at least you're aware of that. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Okay? It's good to be, uh, you know... I love when I get emails from viewers. I love you. I watch all of your videos. Right off the bat, I know you fibbing me. No problem. Then they have the nerve, the nerve to ask a question that has been answered on 10 of my so-called I watched all of your videos. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I watched all your videos, I love them. It's like hearing, you know, you're a really nice guy, like, you know, when you're dating and you're not married yet. The girl says, she says, what did she say? I like you. And then you know what's coming, but, but. Anyway, the guy says to me, I love your videos. My wife and I watch every single one of your videos. At that point, I start hyperventilating because I'm being stroked, you know? We watch every one of your videos. Okay. To do me a favor, tell me what glue to use. I got 11 videos on glue, bro. If you watched every one of my videos, even if you didn't, you would have seen at least two. If you watch 90% of them, you want to sing to it. And I say, oh, oh, thank you so much for watching uh, five of my videos. But I answered the blue question uh, as of last week 11 times. In fact, if you simply look down over the last two weeks, buddy, you know, so anyway, I, I make it nice. I say, thank you. Where are you from? After I tell them what pace to use, no answer. See ya. That's all right, though. It's a pleasure serving. Right? You know, I really like you. You're the best. Okay. Okay, what's coming? 
Whenever there's a compliment, there's usually a question with five parts to it. I got a question, but it has five parts. It's all right. Now, our hinge is now flat, and so we go up near the hinge. I call it a hinge, I'm just saying calling it a hinge. Okay, how are we? Can somebody tell me if that's level? Nope, we are off and we gotta bring it in. Yeah. Okay, so the bottom has to come in. So you understand. You understand the issue here, right? And so we're just gonna move it over. You know what the worst thing in life is, in my opinion? Well, there's a lot of, <laughs> let me put it, let me not put it so dramatically. Um, one of the worst things, oh, see, if I was smart, I would have gone by this X. See how, ah, oh, look, 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 look. The top of the X, now I know they're not all the same X's, but these X's are all lined up. The top of the X touches that, that's good. That's getting over, we gotta push that one over. I'm teaching you how to use the pattern, by the way. So you don't have to break out your laser level, etc. One of the worst things in life, I think, is when you had a friend that you no longer have. Like he's no longer your friend. They don't like anyone. I had a motto years ago. The best way to lose a friend is to make one. Catchy, right? And you know what, for the most part, for the most part, I think it's true. I think it's true. I think a lot of people are just out for themselves. You know? My opinion. Okay. Okay? What do you think? So let's finish this up and show you my beautiful installation. I think it was a good choice to start here, although it made it very difficult. I think you can see the reason why. Look at the O's and how they fall in the corner beautifully. Right?
we did this beauty. One of my favorites. Very, very good quality wallpaper. I hope you like it. Let me know what you think.